You know, some of you are wondering why I decided to go with the Geisley Mark 8 rail for my high-end build. I'll just let Bill Geisley take it from here. Welcome back everybody here today on this manufacturer review to talk about some of the most proven reliable triggers on the market Geisley. Geisley Automatics have been making triggers since about 2004 when Bill Geisley made the high speed national match trigger for competitive shooting. Since then they've evolved into still very precise and competitive based triggers but also have military and government contracts. They've got just phenomenal triggers all around. You can get them in single stage, uh, you can get them two stage which I'll explain that in just a moment for those of you that might not know which is completely fine. Thanks for tuning in. So guys are like I said been around since 2004 pretty much making trigger components for the AR system. And since then they've evolved to making all sorts of things, even complete rifles, even optics, which we actually kind of covered in SHOT Show of 2020. What can you tell me about these optics? So the scope right here we have, it's a variable one to six magnification. Uh, it's a 26 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube. Uh, the approximate weight I believe is about 24 ounces. The reasoning behind the scope is we wanted to be able to offer a complete solution. So since we're doing complete rifles now, we want to be able to offer a, a scope to go along with that rifle. Uh, it has a center dot illumination. Um, it takes one CR2032 battery. But yeah, that's pretty much it for, for the scope here. Hopefully SHOT Show 2022 takes place, seeing how we're registered and got plans to go. Anyway, I've got a couple of guns laid out on the table right now, all featuring their different styles of trigger. Uh, for instance, we've got a two-stage. I'll talk about that one last, actually. I've got a two-stage and a single-stage here. Let's go ahead and talk about the single-stage. That is the one that I think most of us have the experience with here in my Mark 18. Not sorry. Anyway, this one right here is their single-stage precision trigger. It has about a three to three and a half pound pull on it, and we'll go ahead and show that off. Remember, a single stage is gonna be most common to what we see as far as a standard mil-spec trigger goes. You apply the same amount of pressure all the way through until the hammer falls and that trigger breaks, and then the gun cycles and resets the trigger. So let's go ahead and imitate that. I'm pulling the trigger, applying pressure. <laughs> I love these triggers. And it just works. And then the reset, very short travel, and you've got a nice audible reset to it. Very solid. Now, on a two-stage trigger, what you'll notice is you don't apply the same amount of pressure all the way through. You have two stages. First stage, the first stage you'll notice you've got some light travel. Make sure we're good here. You've got some light travel. You see that there before you hit an obvious wall. A lot of precision shooters prefer this because they know at that precise moment when you start to apply a little bit more pressure that it's going to break and you're going to send that round down range. Reset is very similar, still very, very small distance of travel, very light, nice audible reset. Fantastic triggers. The other one I've got on the table here is one that's actually uh, not too common because you can only find it in the Super Duty line of rifles offered by Geisley, but it's ultimately a two-stage trigger, but instead of having a flat bow like you see on this guy right here, where the trigger is completely flat, or a curved bow where we see more of a traditional M4 style curve right there you've got something that is a little bit of both it's kind of a lightning bow this is the super semi-auto enhanced X trigger that is only available to like government contracts or the super duty rifle that you see right here and it is actually a super comfortable trigger it's got a little bit more surface area on the front end and has just a very slight curve to it very ergonomic, feels great. And let's go ahead and test out that pull on it here. Two stage, like I said, so you'll see we got just a little bit of take up before we hit that wall right here. And I apply a little bit more pressure and it drops. And again, real solid feel to it. What I'm doing there too, is I'm cycling the gun to reset that trigger just as if I shot it just now. And then we'll hear that reset after just a little bit of distance traveled. 
fantastic feel to it. Looks great, feels great. Guys and triggers are just awesome. Nice and lightweight too. You can get them a little bit heavier if you want them in something more of like a duty rifle or whatever it might be for you, which is fantastic. If you want something super light for those precise shots for competition, for long range distance or whatever it might be, they have a wide availability of triggers, which I have never had a Geisley trigger fell on me. And this rifle alone, uh, before I switched out the mil spec trigger that came with it, I had, no, that is what I switched it into. Had an echo trigger in there for a while, uh, which again, a lot of fun and I like it, but I really want to kind of test the reliability of the Geisley, which it's going to take me a very long time before I wear out any parts on this guy, I think. But I do believe I'm up to about maybe 25 to 3,000 rounds, 2,500 to 3,000 rounds uh, with this trigger with zero issues, and I doubt I will ever have any. So I, that inspires a lot of confidence, especially just how proven these triggers are. It, they work great. Now, with that being said, like I said, they've evolved over time to not just focus so much on triggers, but on complete rifles, even all the way down to barrels and even optics, which I don't have one of their optics here, but they did get into the LPVO game, which is pretty cool. And we did see a couple of them at SHOT Show. I can't speak to the optics side of house as far as their reliability goes. Uh, they're not as proven simply because they are newer to the market. And according to the website, all they say is that it's coming from a quality scope maker in Japan, which, okay, there's a lot of quality optics and quality glass coming from Japan. Have I looked through one of these optics? Yes, again, I interviewed them at SHOT Show, looked through the optics, and it was kind of cool to have a complete rifle built by one manufacturer that does have a very proven and reputable track record and everything down from the barrel to the upper receiver, lower receiver, minus the attachments such as like a stock and grip and whatnot, but even the grips now Geisley makes. So just about everything that could come on the rifle was all Geisley, including the optic, which again, I thought was pretty cool. Oh, and not the muzzle device because that's sure fire on this guy. But anyway, like I said, they've evolved to do a whole lot of stuff, complete rifles and including the rails. The rails are something that have really grown in popularity recently. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to move my arrow, move my beloved Mark 18 here, and let's show you guys the Mark 16 rail and also the Mark 8 rail, which you may have seen just recently on my super high-end build. You saw the parts laid out and now you're getting kind of a sneak peek of what the upper receiver looks like. I love it. I really, really do love it. This is the Mark 8 rail. This guy is beefy. And when I look at this and I find out too that the United States military decided to opt for the Mark 16 rail, which is a little bit slimmer, as you guys can see here. It is M-lock, obviously, just like here, all M-lock. But what you'll notice on the this rail here is just a little bit more slim, right? So it was kind of funny, to me at least, why they didn't opt for this guy that's a little bit thicker all the way around. And it just, I was like, this seems more military-esque. But I think the way the military is looking at it is they've already got the Riz 2 rail if they wanted something beefier and bulkier and whatnot. That's all Picatinny right there. So it makes sense to say, you know what? Hey, we're not gonna compromise here. We're gonna go, well, in a sense, I don't think there is any compromise. You want something slim, lightweight, still hold zero and have a secure lockup, then the URGI makes sense in this case. The upper receiver group improved that Geisley has partnered with Daniel Defense on and made. So very solid rail. You can see it's got a locking mechanism right back here. That's just two torque screws that tighten down, torque them down to the appropriate weight and you'll be solid. And it even integrates into the upper receiver with this little locking tab. So that way, if this thing does go through some sort of abuse and everything, and even Bill Geisley put a video out here of him just absolutely wrecking one of these. I've done some torture tests before, but what that man does with that rifle is just ridiculous. But the rail didn't move, it was kind of cool. So you'll notice that this thing locks right into the upper receiver, so it can take a lot of stress. Uh, and if it does break, then you've probably broken the upper receiver, broken that tab or whatever else, and you've done something absolutely ridiculous to your rifle and it's probably not gonna function anyway. But with all that being said, fantastic rails. And they have a very, like I said, secure lockup to them and, and they're just simple as well. Don't get me wrong, I love the Riz too, but trying to remove that rail for just cleaning and everything else, you got a lot of screws to undo, and then you, it's there's a lot happening is all, all I'm gonna say. But 
Anyway, super reliable for sure. It's gonna hold zero, very rugged and durable. But if you want something a little bit lighter, well, Picatinny is just heavy. That's all there is to it. Go M-Lock and you'll be a little bit happier if, you're if your goal is weight reduction, all right? So with all that said, again, here's a little sneak peek at the high-end build with the Geisley Mark 8 rail. And it is, I, I love this thing. All right, anyway, back to this guy here. Uh, while we're on the subject of Geisling, which obviously this whole video will be, they don't make just triggers for the AR. They also make them for the IWI Tavor, which is pretty cool. And also everybody's favorite little battle rifle slash DMR slash FN not being able to color coordinate, the SCAR. And we have thrown on the SCAR Super or the Super SCAR trigger. Everything's super with Geisley, by the way. The Super SCAR trigger by Geisley in our latest SCAR build, but it comes pretty much out of the box on the SCAR 20 that you see right here. And it is a phenomenal two-stage trigger for the SCAR system. I'll go ahead and show you guys that as well. You'll notice right here, two stage again, like I said, so just a little bit of take up before you hit that wall, apply a little bit more pressure. Nice and light weight. And then the reset. Yeah, very, very little travel and just feels great. I do love shooting this in 6.5 Creedmoor with that trigger. I know it's not a gun made for mag dumping, but it does it effectively. Let me just say that, all right? So anyway, whole line of triggers, barrels that they're making, whole rifles, the Super Duty rifle, it's not cheap by any means, but in my mind, it's definitely worth it. You are getting just about anything that Geisling makes. If they're gonna put their name on it, it's gonna be quality. That's the level of trust I have with them. By the way, not sponsored by Geisling at all. It's just, we like to hit up products that are actually good and uh, show, show them off. And so that's what we have here. And it's just really impressed me. So guys, like, good job. Just get rid of the little you know, thingy right there on the grip and we'll be set. Anyway, I've talked highly about Geisley and if you're interested in owning one of these, well, I definitely recommend. And I also recommend you going to classicfirearms.com and getting your entries in for this guy because well, it's a super awesome AR. In fact, that's the code word super that you can type in to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries at classicfirearms.com. Don't forget to refer your friends and family. It is coming just as you see right here with the Lancer 30 round mag, the Trigicon ACOG green at that green reticle, which is fantastic. And I liked how light this guy is for one and the ergonomics of this rail. I mean, I can wrap my hand all the way around it, which is nice. Really get a good grip on this guy and shoot the ever living crap out of it. So I really like the idea of a hand stop here instead of a vertical grip or an angled grip. The hand stop just feels very ergonomic and comfortable. So that's what I decided to go with. Anyway, classicfirearms.com. Get your entries in for this guy and let me know what you guys think about Geisley Automatics down in the comments section below. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.